We're going to go to processing.org today um, to download processing, which is a Java-based language that we will be using to understand um, sort of how programming works. So processing.org. It's not Python. It's Java-based. But it is a little bit different than Java also. So we're going to go to the downloads page, which you can find either at the um, top left or on the middle section where it says download processing. It will prompt you to donate. I'm assuming you don't have money on you right now, so hit no donation and then click on download. On this download page, there's going to be a lot of different options here. Windows 64, 32, then Linux 64, 32, and some crazy set of letters, and then Mac OS X. If you're on anything that is a Mac that's not an iPad or an iPhone, this is going to be you. If you're on Windows 8 or above, you're probably 64-bit. Eight point one should be sixty four bit, hopefully. It might not be, but it does depend on your computer. But I think eight requires sixty four bit um, in general. And finally, if you're on a Chromebook, I'm assuming Linux is what you're going for here. Um, whether it's sixty four or thirty two, I cannot tell you. I would assume sixty four at first and then go to thirty two. So if you've gotten a download, haven't opened it, great. You still can't do what? You're confused? Where did I lose you? Processing.org? You're not getting the same website? Gosh, I'm not doing very well. Pro coding day. Processing. Alright, got some folks downloaded it, some folks having some issues with it. Um, Gavin. I don't know what's going on with that. I wouldn't trust whatever that is. Go ahead and do a direct download here. You gotta make sure it's spelled right. It is .org and not .com. And I actually didn't expect it to download so quickly, so that's wonderful actually. You got it? Okay. So what I'm going to have you do is please raise your hand once you've gotten it started downloading or downloaded. So again, this is going to be our website here for it. Any luck, Una, with the... Um, with the Chromebook. Oh, it was an ad, gotcha. Should you put it in the C drives? Um, I put mine on my desktop, but you can put it in the, it automatically should save to your C drive if um, 
you download it from the internet, it should automatically be in your downloads. Um, just put it somewhere that you'll be able to find it. All right, give me just a second, Una, let me see. So we're going to be using the processing language today, um, which is a Java-based language that lets you see exactly what's happening on your computer. So um, before I go any further, this is an older PowerPoint presentation. There's a lot of um, typos and stuff in it. It wasn't written by me. It was made by this guy, Mr. Pearson, that used to work with us. Um, so if something's misspelled, I know. Don't stop class to worry about that. Um, so go ahead and get started. Um, Mr. Pearson, actually. He no longer works with us, but he did for a while. So basically, um, with programming, I know some of you have done it before, but some of you have not. Basically, programming is sort of like tying a shoe. It's a step-by-step -step process. Programs do read each line individually and accomplish whatever is in that line before going to the next line. And it smells. There we go. So the first thing that a programmer learns about their computer is that computers are really, really stupid. The only reason computers can do what they do is because we tell them how to process information. So you have a computer in front of you, you think it can do anything, only if you tell it to. So via coding usually is how that works. So like I said before we get started, processing is a Java-based program, so a lot of the syntax of it is similar to Java. If you are familiar with Java, this will come fairly easy to you. It was developed, not devolved, at MIT, um, just like Scratch, so if you're familiar with Scratch, similar concept there. It is intended to give people a visual representation of how programming works, and it takes some of the boringness out of programming by giving the user a visual sense of what's going on behind the scenes. Um, and I'll show you what that entails in just a moment here. It is sort of like Scratch in that you put code together and you can see how it behaves on the screen. So you can make games in Scratch. You can also make games in processing. But it is a little bit more difficult. Code.org. What about it? In terms of Java? Oh, another one like Scratch? Yeah, I think those are really handy for people that are just learning. You can actually see what's going on physically. And it helps me a lot being a, a visual person. Um, so go ahead and open it up if you haven't already. Um, on my desktop, it was actually a little bit closer to a folder and not just a shortcut. So we're going to try to open it up, which will leave us something that looks like this. You found your old Windows computer? Awesome. Oh, that's good news. So yes, if you are just now coming in, we're going to this page right here and downloading processing. Um, it will want you to extract it. So I want you to extract it onto your desktop. It shouldn't take terribly long, actually. It took me not even a minute. It'll probably take you two minutes. Once it extracted. But yes, definitely download this if you haven't already. You're going to get a page that looks like this. Has anyone ever used the Arduino before? Maybe in this class, maybe elsewhere. Yeah, so this looks probably pretty familiar. It's a very similar IDE, or interactive development environment, as the Java for Arduino. You don't have one, what? Oh, an Arduino? 
you don't have to for this. This is just um, making a comparison. So which one do you pick? Um, it depends on if you're on a Windows or a Mac. You probably don't have a Linux. Um, generally, if you have Windows 8 or above, you'll definitely have 64-bit. But you're probably safer using 64-bit than 32-bit um, for this case. So it's not doing it, it's not doing what? Oh, it downloaded nine things. Oh, you're asking which one to open. Um, you're going to be opening the one that just straight up says processing. Not processing Java, just processing. Um, question is, this can run off a Raspberry Pi, couldn't it? More than likely, yeah, If when we're doing physical computing. I know for a fact, though, that the Arduino supports Java since it's literally coded in Java. You don't like Scratch because you can't link objects very well. Yeah, I don't like that either because you have to create a whole new instance of an object, which gets pretty annoying sometimes. I agree with you there, Cameron. It says one interrupted action. Um... Gavin, what you want to do is make a shortcut for it, not just straight up drag it onto your desktop. I think that's what's going wrong with that. Yeah. Because this language needs all of this stuff to run. So if you take it out of its folder, it's not going to be able to call all these other things. Um, it's going to get confused and it's going to tell you, uh-uh. You got it? Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and open it. What's going on, Gavin? Why can't you open it? What's, what's the error? starts to open but it just doesn't. It does take a little bit to load, especially if you're trying to load a file into it. But um, if you're okay with this, Gavin, at the end of class we can work on getting it open. I just, there's a lot of other people in here and I do want to help you. I just can't completely break for that right now. So just pay attention to what we're doing, sort of get the concepts in. And at the end of class I will um, take control of your computer and see what's on. So you will see a screen that looks a little bit like this. So the white part is going to be where you write your code. Notice that there are line numbers next to it, which is going to be very handy um, in the future. The most, or er, you all should see this big, huge uh, play button. If you wrote code and press play, or press, yeah, press the play button, um, another screen is going to pop up showing that the code is running. We'll get there in a minute. Your co computer is a mess right now. Are you able to open it, or is it just not working out for you? Or is it just your computer's a mess? It's just a mess. Oh, okay. So basically, in a second, we're going to start writing code. You're going to start on line one and go down from there. So again, line one. What I want you to do now is starting on line one, write literally this. So void setup, 
open close parenthesis, next line, open bracket, next line, next line, close bracket, double space, void draw, open close bracket, next line, or open close parenthesis, next line, open bracket, skip two lines, close bracket. I'm going to do that myself. If you're looking for where the brackets on your computer are, your backspace button, it'll be below and to the left. So you're writing literally this, starting on line one. For some reason, whenever you try and open it, it says an error occurred and closes. Does it give you any other information about the error? Or does it just say error? Bye. And just so you all know, this is pretty standard for the first time we use software. Just all sorts of issues arise that had nobody had any idea would happen. So if you got yours working great and perfect, you are very lucky. Um, it's expected that there are some issues this first day. And so I do apologize. I do want everybody to successfully get this installed if they can, um, and so I'm willing to work with you. So you're saying this piece of code works, or are you saying that your version works? The code works? Correct, it should bring up a small box. And I am aware it's annoying and I do apologize. Um, like I said, all sorts of issues ring up. It says the version of 1% isn't compatible. What? That's an interesting error. You can press run if you'd like, yes, if you got this in. You have no idea? Because I thought it was supposed to just download it immediately. If you don't have Java on your computer, you will need to go and download it and download it rather. Which is java.com slash n slash download. Um, specifically Java, just the software itself. Because processing is based on Java. Um, and if you have Java, this should be working. Now, I don't know if I already answered this, but if you run this successfully, a box will pop up, but it will have nothing in it. You have it from when you downloaded processing. Does it download a version of Java when you download processing? Oh, what am I looking for? I don't either. <laughs> I'm trying to figure that out myself. Yeah, that's basically what it's saying. Congrats, you've done nothing. That's intense. Um, I 
I'm actually not sure if it downloads another iteration of Java. It looks like it would. Um, try downloading, if you're using a Windows computer, try downloading the processing version that is the one below it. So try 32-bit. That might help. If, it's, if it still doesn't work, then either at the end of class or at a time convenient to you, I can work with you to get it working. So you got yours working. Okay, excellent. That's good news. Java wasn't installed. Okay. So if it's not working, make sure you have Java installed, which you have to do separately from downloading this. Yours is working great, all right. I'm still having some issues with it. End of class though, I'm gonna help out whoever's still having issues. If you're still having issues, I'm just gonna give you some basic, or I'm gonna have you um, just stop trying to get it to work and I'll work with you at the, at the end of class to get this working, okay? Out of date Java versions detected. Um, are you still able to run it or no? Are you making sure you're on the most recent version of Java? Version 8 update 71? Click on Remind Me Later, Gavin. fully not working now. All right. At the end of class, I'm going to be working with you and with Andrew to see what I can help you with. All right. I just want you to pay attention to what I'm doing now. And I am willing to work with you so that you can get caught up. Okay. Okay. So your Wi-Fi sucks. It's saying web page not available. Whenever you try to reload, it starts downloading it. Oh, okay. How do you create ex directories and exe files on Java or on processing? Processing? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. I have only been using processing for a couple of days. So that's a question for another day. But that being said, um, I am going to proceed. Gavin, Andrew, I still got you. Um, end of class, I'll be working with you, okay? Um, but everybody else should have this drawn. If you click on run, a box will pop up and that's it. Anybody with it working not have this uh, working out. It's not giving you any errors or anything. And Gavin, if you do have another browser, which you should, go into that one, even if it is Internet Explorer. So we're going to add some stuff to this, um, but not before I talk a little bit about exactly what's going on there. So we have two, what we're going to learn are called functions in a row, but that's about all we know, and they have a bunch of weird words that 
are just kind of random. So to get started, um, you'll notice that underneath these words, there are a set of open brackets and a set of closed brackets, or braces. It depends on what you want to call them. I call them brackets. Brackets are really important. They can be your best friend or your worst enemy. Whenever you do have an open bracket, you must later have a closed bracket. These brackets do contain code. They'll basically encapsulate co sections of code. So this is a lot closer to Java than it is Scratch. We're doing some straight up coding here. They're short for start and end. Essentially, yeah. Basically it's saying, all right, the code that I'm gonna run is starting right after this, and it's going to end right before this. So, why is the slide there? I don't know. What are these called? Braces or brackets. So we left an extra line in between these brackets when we first started our code. So notice this extra line 3 and extra line 8. Everything within the brackets that are underneath void setup belong to um, the setup function. A function is being something that, a bit of code that you're processing. To be very, very simple there. Similarly, everything in between um, the brackets underneath draw is going to belong to draw. So a question. Your computer is asking you if you want to extract all files. Yes, Una, you do want to extract your files. Um, you want to probably extract them in to your desktop or into your uh, downloads folder. Just somewhere that you can find it. That's where you want to put it. So if I wanted to do some stuff with draw, would I ever want to put that within the setup brackets? If I'm writing code for draw, do I want to put it in setup? No. Exactly. They do two different things, and so we want to keep them separate. So let's talk about void setup. Void setup is a function. A function is something that does something. It is a special kind of function in that almost every piece of, no, in fact, every piece of processing code that you do do will use this void setup function. And it sets up your code. So once you run a piece of code and you stop running it, um, your environment might look a little bit differently. What this does is resets everything and tailors it to the code that you're writing's needs. So what's important about the void setup is that anything within these brackets only gets run once. So your program starts, it's going to read void setup. Your computer's saying, hey, anything within these brackets is going to set up our computer. Once everything in the brackets is done running, it's never going to run again until you restart your program. So it's important to remember that because anything in there only occurs once. Void draw is not like this. Void draw is the heart of your code. That's where all the meat's going to go. The difference in void draw is that every line of code that is contained within these brackets is going to be run repeatedly, forever. Anybody that is familiar with code 
Can you tell me what kind of loop this void draw is? It's going to run each line until it's done running lines, and then it's going to start over again until we tell it to stop. Yeah, exactly, you got it. It's going to be a forever loop. Anything in here is going to be repeated forever until we make it stop. So remember, void setup is going to be run once. Void draw is a forever loop, or an infinite loop. So we're going to build our first program that's actually a real program. So what we're going to do, you'll watch the YouTube video to catch up. All right, see you later then. The first thing that we're going to do is save the current file that we have. This is the very basic file. This code shouldn't run, or nothing should run without this code. So we're going to go to File, and then Save As, and we're going to save it as First Project, or My First, or First Project. Just make sure that you know it is the first project that you're working on. So after we save it, let's go ahead and write our first line of code into it. So within the void setup function, we're going to type in size, open parenthesis, 500, comma, 500, close parenthesis and then finish that guy off with a semicolon. So, oops. We're writing this right here into our void setup function. And it's very important we keep that semicolon in there. At this point, you can go ahead and run it to see what happens. So after you get this contained within the void setup, go ahead and run it, see what happens. John Mark got it right. All it's going to do is make a huge box as opposed to that little tiny box that it started with. What this size piece of code does is, yeah, you got it. It's going to create a 500 by 500 um, pixel box. And that's it. That's all we're going to have being done right now. Nothing's going to happen because we haven't added any more code. But hey, we made a bigger box. You can make it as big as your screen. You can make it, I don't know how small you can make it, but... We're going to use the 500 by 500 um, to get started with so we can do some drawing with it. So this box that pops up is called a GUI window. It's spelled G-U-I, but it is pronounced GUI. It stands for Graphical User Interface, so you can actually see what's going on. Um, if you've worked with the Raspberry Pi before, you can actually boot your Raspberry Pi directly into a GUI so that the user, which is you, can use it like you would a normal computer. So it's converting this 
text and line based code into something that's easier for people to use. The two numbers within the parentheses define the height and the width of the window. And the semicolon is basically a period for the code. It's telling the um, development environment, hey, we're done with this line of code. You can go to the next line and run that. Make sense? Pretty simple stuff we're going at right now. We're going to get pretty crazy um, probably next class. Um, and at this point, I do want to say you should be running after every slide unless I tell you otherwise. And you figured out how to add a comment. If you've worked um, with Java or I guess Python even before, the syntax is very similar. So if you know how to do comments in Java, you can also do it in this. But comments are pretty only helpful for you. So. So now we're going to add another line of code into the void draw section. So remember, this is the code that runs forever and ever and ever. The code is going to be line, open parenthesis, 250, comma, 250, comma, 0, comma, 0, close parenthesis, semicolon. This is all we're going to be adding. To start with. So what this is going to be doing is making a line on your screen that goes from the coordinate 0, 0, which is the top left corner, all the way to the center, which is 250, 250. So remember that this is a 500 by 500 box. I'll get to what these other two zeros are a little bit later, so just don't worry about them right now. Just know that they are zero for a reason right now. So all we've done now is made a line that goes from zero, zero to 250, 250. This is basically like hello world in other programming languages, which is saying this program is working. So you should be seeing this horizontal or this uh, diagonal line here. Okay. So at this point it is important to say top left is our origin, bottom right is the um, total size. Now processing is just like most other programming languages in that it uses the Cartesian coordinate system. So if you've done some graphing in your classes, you know, X and Y, that's exactly what programming uses. So everything's related to a set of X and Y numbers. So I want you to try to make your window look like this. I want you to change the little p bit of code that you already have written to make it so your line goes all the way across the screen instead. All you gotta do is change the numbers. So I want you to figure out exactly what this line would be, what all the numbers would be to do this. So I do have somebody that's already gotten it, several other people that got it. So the line values in here 
are x1 and then y1 and then x2 and then y2. You see you can't get it? They're not x, y, z, they're just x and y. This is two dimensional. You have Java installed but it's still not working. Do you have another computer you can use for next class, Gavin? No? All right. Like I said, closer to the end of class if possible. I'm going to work with you to see what I can do. Um, so basically, x1, y1, x2, y2. If you didn't want your line to go from the origin to somewhere, you can change these x and y values to make the line go elsewhere. So I'm literally going to do some random values that are under 500. And notice that the line does change ever so slightly. So basically what it's saying is your first x value is going to be some number, and your second is going to be another number. Your line is going to connect from these two numbers to each other. Similarly for your y1 and y2 values. So to get that line to go all the way across the um, screen, all you have to do is make that other number 500 instead of 250. Best game ever. So maybe you can make a program that lets people choose what chords the line will take. You could definitely do that. But there we go, just that making it 500, so we're starting our line at the coordinates of 500, 500, and making our line go all the way to 0, 0. So how can we make a triangle knowing this information? A triangle just being three lines that are put together. We can make three lines and have each coordinate well, you could use the repeat, or you could use a finite loop for sure, um, but we're going to do that in a couple classes from now. Um, you do change the coordinates, and how do you get the coordinates? You just have to know the geometry of your work, work plane. So you could use the repeat function, um, but before we get to loops, what we're going to do is create this triangle. So I'm actually going to... Um, to start it at the center again, just for ease of use. So just make sure. Oops. So just make sure here we've got our first line from zero to two, or zero zero to two fifty two fifty. Let's add another line. That will go from zero zero to zero five hundred or to five hundred zero. I'm sorry. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's probably a bad example because you can't really see the line that got got drawn on this side. But there is a line going from the origin here all the way down to this corner. And to finish off our triangle, we can make another line that goes from 0, 0500 to 250, 250. Oops, I forgot my semicolon. My program's not happy with me there. So 
So by adding these three lines together, we can find, make our triangle. And specifically when you're looking, to, looking for coordinates, remember that this is zero, zero, and this is gonna be your max size right here. X coordinates are horizontal, Y coordinates are vertical. So a coordinate of zero in the X and 500 in the Y, we're not gonna move any horizontal in the X and 500 in the Y. So we get this triangle just by making three lines that are connected. But engineers are real lazy. We are the laziest people. There's actually going to be a function that will skip all those steps and let us just draw a straight up triangle without having to draw three lines. The, um, the syntax for it is literally just like line except you change the word line for triangle. You tried a circle earlier? I bet it didn't work, did it? Yep, and there's a reason why doing the same with circle didn't work. And same thing if you try it with rectangle, it's not gonna work because you don't have the correct syntax. So basically for a triangle, there's gonna be actually six different coordinates that go x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. All of these correspond to each individual corner. So if we're going to talk about the triangle, we can take every, all of this stuff out here. I'm going to start our first x coordinate, our first y coordinate, which I'm doing 0, 0 to be easy. Our second coordinate, let's do 200, 200. And our third coordinate, which will be, in, just for funsies, let's do 400, 400. Where are the vertices? Well, actually, I don't think that'll work. Hang on. No, it's not going to work. I'm sorry. That's my fault. Let's do 3, 3, 3, and 3, 3, 3. Yeah, I didn't think that would work either. Let's do 333 three, three, and 399. Nine. I made a triangle with all these dimensions here. Can anyone tell me why 400, 400, like I tried to do earlier, wouldn't work for this? Wouldn't work for this third vertice? Yep, the lines were on top of each other. And that was me just not thinking thoroughly, clearly there. So there you go. So at this point, you probably realize that when you're typing, certain words change different colors as you're typing them. These words are program-specific keywords, and every single language has them. These words are special. That means they do something in this language unique to anything else. Um, so basically, it's just like in Harry Potter, you wouldn't say Avada Kedavra when you meant Expecto Patronum. So certain words of special meaning.
So pretty boring what we've got right now, just like a triangle on a gray background, a white triangle. Boring. What's cool about this is we can actually change both the background color and the color of our triangles, but I think we're only going to get to changing the background color today. So keep in mind that this is getting to the point where we can actually be building a game, so this is what we're building up to. And it is super, super pink. So to get this triangle to be a certain color, what we can do is in the void setup, and if you're bad at hues, that's okay. Um, you don't even need to worry about that, honestly. But in the void setup, you're going to add underneath the size. You're going to put the, um, the word background. And you're going to pick three random numbers that are between 0 and 255. So you can pick any three random numbers between 0 and 255. So let's do... I'm doing a 52, 243, and 117. Yes, perfect. And let's see what happens when we run it then. It turned my, my background some random shade of green. This is literally random. I had no idea what color I would get. I mean, I sort of did, but I didn't know exactly. So you can play around with these values and see what higher values and low values of each of these three things mean. So some of you might have gotten a gross purple. Some of you might have gotten super, super hot blue. Um, 137, 254, 24 is super bright green, probably brighter than my green. But basically, what we're doing here, these random numbers actually mean something. Your background 0, 255, 255, that's going to be what? Um, I can't remember what that's going to be, but I'll try it in a second. So, Cameron, it's cyan, okay. <laughs> that's actually exactly what it should be, but... Cameron, you are correct. These numbers have something to do with um, how colors are perceived by humans. And actually, if you go into um, Tools and Color Selector, you can move your mouse around on both of these guys and notice that the RGB values um, uh, the RGB values can change. Um, and I'll explain what that means next class because it is the end of class. That said, now you are able to change background colors based on how you want to. Um, but I'll explain more about RGB a little bit later next class. So that being said, I hope most of you at least got um, processing installed. If you haven't, I am going to stay on for a little bit to help you all out. Um, otherwise, if you don't have any problems with it, you are free to go for the day. Um, I appreciate you coming out today, and we'll be working more with this next class. So.